My name is Sherry Davis, and let's be honest, I'm a recovering government employee. And I say that with a huge shout out to the folks that work in government and on systems change. It's hard, it can be isolating, and the work can feel impossible. But government is the people that show up. Really, it's the people that can show up and are committed to the promise that public service offers. Service to people, democracy, and fixing the problems that community members face. 17 years ago, I walked through City Hall for the first time as a staff member. And that walk revealed something to me. I was a unicorn. There weren't many people who looked like me that worked in the building. And yet there were folks committed to addressing hundreds of years of systemic inequity that left some behind and many ignored. Where there was promise, there was a huge problem. You see, democracy, as it was originally designed, had a fatal flaw. It only laid pipeline for rich, white men to progress. And now, if you're a smart, rich, white man, you understand why I say that's a problem. Massive talent has been left off the field. Our moral imaginations have grown anemic. Our highest offices are plagued by corruption. We're on the brink of a sort of apathetic apocalypse, and it's not okay. We've got to open the doors to city halls and schools so wide that people can't help but walk in. We've got to throw out the old top-down processes that got us into this mess and start over with new faces around the table, new voices in the mix, and we have to welcome new perspectives every step of the way. Not because it's the right thing to do, although it is, but because that's the only way for us to all succeed together. And here's the best news of all. I know how to do it. The answer, well, an answer, is participatory budgeting. That's right, participatory budgeting, or PB for short. PB is a process that brings community and government together to ideate, develop concrete proposals, and vote on projects that solve real problems in community. Now, I realize that people don't get up and dance when I start talking about public budgets, but participatory budgeting is actually about collective, radical imagination. Everyone has a role to play in PB, and it works because it allows community members to craft real solutions to real problems. It provides the infrastructure for the promise of government. And honestly, it's how I saw democracy actually work for the first time. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was 2014 in Boston, Massachusetts, and Mayor Menino asked me to launch the country's first youth-focused PB effort with $1 million of city funds. Now, we didn't start with line items and limits or spreadsheets and formulas. We started with people. We wanted to make sure that everyone was listened to. So we brought in young people from historically and traditionally marginalized neighborhoods, members of the queer community, and youth that were formerly incarcerated. And together, often with pizza and a sugar-free beverage, we talked about how to make Boston better. And we designed a process that we called Youth Lead the Change. We imagined a Boston where young people could access the information that they need to thrive, where they could feel safe in their communities, and where they can transform public spaces into real hubs of life for all people. And that's exactly what they did. In the first year, young people allocated $90,000 to increase technology access for Boston Public High School students by delivering laptops right to Boston Public High Schools so that students could thrive inside and outside of the classroom. They allocated $60,000 to creating art walls that literally and figuratively brightened up public spaces. But they addressed a more important problem. Young people were being criminalized and pulled into the justice system for putting their art on walls. So this gave them a safe space to practice their craft. They allocated $400,000 to renovating parks 
to make them more accessible for all people of all bodies. Now, <laughs> admittedly, this didn't go as smoothly as we had planned. Right before we broke ground on the park, we actually found out that it was on top of an archeological site and had to halt construction. I thought I broke PB. But because the city was so committed to the project, that's not what happened. They invited community in to do a dig, protected the site, found artifacts, extended Boston's history, and then moved forward with the renovation. If that isn't a reflection of radical imagination in government, I don't know what is. What sounds simple is actually transformational for the people and communities involved. I'm seeing community members shape transportation access, improve their schools, and even transform government buildings so that there is space inside of them for them. Before we had PB, I would see people who look like me and come from where I come from, walk into government buildings for this new initiative or that new working group. And then I'd watch them walk right back out. Sometimes I wouldn't see them again. It's because their expertise was being unvalued. They weren't truly being engaged in the process. But PB is different. When we started doing PB, I met amazing young leaders across the city. One in particular, a rock star. Malachi Hernandez, 15 years old, came into a community meeting shy, curious, a little quiet, stuck around, and became one of the young people helping to lead the project. Now fast forward a couple years. Malachi was the first in his family to attend college. A couple weeks ago, he was the first in his family to graduate. Malachi has appeared in the Obama White House several times as part of the My Brother's Keeper initiative. President Obama even quotes Malachi in interviews. It's true, you can look it up. Malachi got engaged, stayed engaged, and is out here changing the way we think about community leadership and potential. Or my friend Maria Haddon, who was involved in the first PB process in Chicago, then went on to become a founding participatory budgeting project board member eventually a staff member, and then unseated a 28-year incumbent, becoming the first queer, black, alder person in Chicago's history. That's real engagement. That's being taken seriously. That's building out and building on community leadership. That's system change. And it's not just in the US either. After starting 30 years ago in Brazil, PB has spread to over 7,000 cities across the globe. In Paris, France, the mayor puts up 5% of her budget, over 100 million euros, for community members to decide on and shape their city. Globally, PB has been shown to improve public health, reduce corruption, and increase trust in government. Now we know the challenges that we face in today's society. How can we expect people to feel motivated to show up to the polls when they can't trust that government is run by and for the people? I'd argue that we haven't actually experienced true participatory democracy in these United States of America just yet. But democracy is a living, breathing thing. And it's still our birthright. It's time to renew trust, and that's not going to come easy. We have to build new ways of thinking, of talking, of working, of dreaming, of planning in its place. What would America look like if everyone had a seat at the table? If we took the time to reimagine what's possible and then ask, how do we get there? My favorite author, Octavia Butler, says it best. In Parable of the Sower, basically my Bible, she says, all that you touch, you change. All that you change changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. It's time for these 50 states to change. What got us here sure as hell won't get us there. We've got to kick the walls of power down and plant gardens of genuine democracy in their place.
That's how we change systems, by opening doors so wide that people can't help but walk in. So what's stopping you from bringing participatory budgeting to your community?